Okay, we're going to talk about some more probability topics here, basically three topics. We're going to start with the probability of A union B. So basically, we saw in the counting that the number of elements in A union B is the number of elements in A plus the number of elements in B minus the number of elements in A intersect B. Well, you can read this, basically this is a proof here, but what I'm going to do is just go ahead and tell you that the probability that the probability of A union B can be found the same way except you use probabilities. So the probability of A union B would be the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of the intersection uh, if there is an intersection and of course if there's not an intersection then you can write it as just the probability of A plus the probability of B. Now um, here's an example. Suppose we select a, car a single card from a deck of cards. Find the following probabilities. A card that the card is a queen or a club. A queen or a club. Well let's say A is the event that the card is a queen and there's four ways that can happen out of 52 and let's say B is the probability that the card is a club and there's 13 ways that can happen out of 52 and then there's only one card that's both a queen and a club so the probability of getting the intersection of A and B would just be 1 out of 52 and so using the, the uh, probability of a union we could say well that's going to be the probability of A which is 4 out of 52 plus the probability of B which is 13 out of 52 minus the probability of A intersect B which is 1 out of 52 and that's going to give us 16 out of 52 which reduces to 4 out of 13. Now the second question says the prob find the probability that a card is that is a queen and a king is selected. A queen and a king is selected. So so actually uh, that should say or because it's supposed to be union. So a card that is a queen or a king is selected. So again or not and. Um, and is usually the intersection and I wanted union here. So let A be the set of all queens. So the prob there's four. So the probability of a queen being selected is four out of 52 and the probability that a king is selected is also 4 out of 52 and since there's no cards that are both a king and a queen simultaneously the probability of this occurring would be 0 so all I have to do is add the probability that I get a king or a queen plus the probability that I get a king so that would be 4 out of 52 plus 4 out of 52 which is 8 out of 52 which reduces to 2 thirteenths. Okay here's another example Suppose a single six-sided die is tossed. Let's find the probability that the die lands odd or divisible by three. So odd or divisible by three. Well, the uh, this should say odd. I don't know why I have that. I don't know. Let's see. That should say odd, and so should this. Okay. All right. Anyway, I'll have to fix that. So the probability that the die lands odd or divisible by three. So let's find the probability that it lands odd. So there's three ways out of six it can land odd. And the probability that it's divisible by three, well, there's two ways. There's, um, there's actually only two ways that can happen. Uh, it's got a roll of three or a six for that to happen. So basically, what you might want to do is just write the set stand. Okay, so there's three odd numbers, 1, 3, and 5. So that's why the probability of getting the odd number is 3 out of 6. And there's two numbers divisible by, by 3, 3 and 6. So the pro that's why the probability of getting a number divisible by 3 is 2 out of 6. So you have 3 out of 6 plus 2 out of 6. But then you have to subtract off the probability of getting a number that's both. Well, there's only one number that's both, and if you look at the set A and the set B, you can see that the one number that's both odd um, as well and divisible by 3 is the number 3. So the probability of getting 
a number in the intersection would, of those two sets would be 1 out of 6. So 3 6 plus 2 6 minus 1 6 is 4 6, which is 2 thirds. Okay, now let's see if I got this one right. Let's see, up here it says the die lands odd or even. Okay, um, so the probability that the die lands odd or even, well, the probability it lands odd, there's three ways out of six that can happen. Probability it lands even, there's three ways out of six that can happen. And there's no way that it can land odd and even, so the probability of that occurring would be zero. So basically, I just, the probability, I take the probability of A, which is three out of six, plus the probability of B, which is three out of six, and I add that together, and it equals one. And that kind of makes sense because, uh, you know, if I say odd or even, I mean, whatever, what other choices are there? So there's a 100% chance that it's going to land odd or even. Okay, this one's going to be a little bit trickier because we're drawing two cards from a deck, and we want to know the probability that you get a face card or an ace. Or an ace. Okay, so let's let A be the event you get a face card, and B the event you get an ace. So what we're looking for is the probability, we want the probability of getting A union B. So we're looking for that probability. But basically what we have to do to find it is, first of all, let's find the probability that we, that we get a face card. So the probability that we get a face card. So let's see if we can figure that out. There's actually two ways we can get a face card we can get exactly one face card or exactly two face cards. So I have to figure out both of these and add them together. So the number of ways to get one face card would be out of the 12 face cards choose one and out of the 40 other cards choose one. And that's actually 480 ways that can happen. And then let's find the number of ways we can get two face cards. Well that would be out of the 12 face cards we want to choose two. And again you don't have to write this next factor but 40, 40 non-face cards choose 0. So that turns out to be 66. So then when you add the two together, there's 546 ways that you can get um, that you can get a face card. So a face card means one or two face cards. So the probability of getting a face card is 546 out of 52 choose 2 because that's the number of two card hands possible or 50, 546 out of 1326. Now Let's find the probability that we get an ace. Well, again, there's two ways to get aces. You can get one ace or you can get two aces. So let's find the probability that we get one ace. Well, to get one ace, that means out of four aces, we got to choose one. And out of the 48 non-aces, we have to choose one. So there's 190 ways that can occur. And then to get two aces means out of the four aces, we choose two. And out of the 48 non-aces, we choose none. So there's six ways that can happen. So there's a total of 198 ways to get an ace, and again, that's out of the same denominator, 1326. Okay, so we're two-thirds of the way there. Okay, so now we need to know the number of ways that we can get a face card and an ace simultaneously. Okay, an ace card and an ace simultaneously. Okay, I had a typo here. I had to get that fixed. Um... Okay, so um, we want to know how many hands have a face card and an ace simultaneously. Well, we know that there's 12 face cards, and so you'd want to get how many ways I could choose one ace card out of 12, and then aces, there's four aces, so you want to know how many ways I can get one ace out of four. So basically, this is the number of ways you can get your one face card. This is the number of ways you can get your one ace. So multiply them together and you get 48. So the probability of getting a card, uh, getting cards that are, are a face card and an ace in them would be the probability of A intersect B would be 48 out of 52 choose 2 and then that would be 48 out of 1326. And now, to find the probability of the union we were after, we take the probability A plus probability B minus probability A intersect B. So here's the probability A, here's the probability B, and here's the probability A intersect B. And then add those up and subtract the last one, and then you get 696 out of 1326, which is about 0.52, excuse me, 0.525.
Okay, the next one says two dice are tossed. Find the probability that they're the same number or a sum greater than 8. Well, we know there's 36 possible rows, so that's the number in our sample space. So let's let A be the event that they're the same number. So there's six ways that can happen. You see that right here. And then B is the event that you get a sum greater than 8. Well, there's lots of sums greater than 8, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 6, 6, 3, and so on. Well, there's actually 10 of those sums that are greater than 8. And then we want to find the probability of the intersection, so we need to know how many of these uh, fall in both sets. Well, the, the, the sample events that fall in both sets are the 5, 5, and the 6, 6. So that's two elements that actually fall in both sets. So now when we put this together with probability, the probability of get, getting cards, or sorry, dice that are the same number, there'd be six ways here out of 36. And the probability of getting um, a sum that's greater than 8, well, there's 10 ways out of 36. And then the probability of getting a sum that's greater than 8 and the two dice are the same, there's two ways out of 36 that can happen. So add the first two, subtract the two out of 36, you get 16 out of 36, which reduces to 4 ninths. And then the next example is basically, it's very similar. This one says the first die is a 2, or the sum of the results is 6 or 7. Well, the first die is a 2. Well, there's actually six ways the first die can be a 2. 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 5, 2, 6. So that's six ways out of 36. And then to get a sum of 6 or 11, um, go back and look at your um, chart and see how many rows of 2 die give you a sum of 6 or 7. And I think you'll see there's 11 of those. And then finally, if you go back and check all those sums that of 6 or 7, where the first die is a 2, you'll see there's 2 of those. If you roll a 2, 4, the first die is a 2, and you get a sum of 6. And if you roll a 2, 5, the first die is 2, and you get a sum of 7. So there's two ways out of 36 that can happen. So then just combine these three fractions and get 15 out of 36, and then reduce it to 5 twelfths. And um, B says the sum of the results is 11, or the second die is a 5. Well, there's two ways to get a sum of 11, so that probability is 2 out of 36. The second die is a 5. Well, there's six ways that can happen. And the only way to get a sum of 11 and the second die of 5 is to roll a 6, 5. So there's only one way out of 36 that can happen. So that's going to be 7 out of 36. And the last example says the sum of the results is 11 and the second die is a 3. Well, if you'll notice, this is the way that you get a sum of 11. These are the way that the second die can be a 3. But notice that there's no overlap. There's no elements from set A that's also in set B. So these sets do not intersect. So in this case, you don't actually need this portion of it because this probability is going to be 0. So you just find the probability of a sum of 11, which is 2 out of 36, plus the probability that the second die is a 3, which is 6 out of 36. Add them together and reduce, and you get 2 ninths. Okay, so... A number 1 to 1,000, what's the probability numbers divisible by 3 or 7? Well, there's 1,000 numbers, and if we let A be the event divisible by 3 and 7 be the event, I mean, B be the event divisible by 7, then for A intersect B, that would mean it has to be divisible by 21. To make a long story short, if you divide 1,000 by 3, that'll tell you how many numbers are divisible by 3, which is about 333. If you divide 1,000 by 7, you get 142 with some change, but it, there's only 142 numbers divisible by 7. And then if you divide by 21, you get 47 numbers and some change. So basically, to find the probability that a number is divisible by 3 or 7, you find the probability that it's divisible by 3, plus the probability that it's divisible by 7, and then minus the probability that it's divisible by 21, which is, you know, that's divisible by 3 and 7 simultaneously. So if it's divisible by 21, it's divisible by both 3 and 7. And then you, you add these two, subtract this one, and you get 428 out of 1,000, which is about 0.428, or about a 43% chance. The next video will actually move on to another topic called the complement.